dear students in the previous class we have explained I have explained the confidence interval for the x coefficient that is the b. For the b we have found what was the lower limit and upper limit. In this class we will find the confidence interval for y and prediction interval. So, today's class agenda is we will we'll explain what is the point estimate and interval estimate and confidence interval for the mean value of y and prediction interval for the individual value of y. We will take one problem then I will first I will solve this problem with the help of uh, python then I will explain what is the meaning of this confidence interval and prediction interval. Data were collected from a sample of 10 ice cream vendors located near college campuses. For the ith observation or uh, restaurant in the sample x i is the size of the student population and y is the quarterly sales of ice cream. The values of x i and y i for 10 restaurants in the sample are summarized in the table that is given next one. So, what the problem says the independent variable is student population dependent variable is sales there was a 10 data set like this. For given data set first we will run the regression model. So, import pandas as pd, import matplotlib as uh, mpl, import stats model dot formula dot api as sm, from sklearn dot linear underscore model import linear regression, from scipy import stats, import cborn as sns, import numpy as np, import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. First we will load the data, we will read the data that is a pd dot read underscore that is the path where I have stored my excel file. So, this is the data. So, what is the there is a 10 data set 10 restaurants this is a student population this is a student population is in terms of 1000 sales also in terms of 1000 of a for a product called ice cream. First we will plot the scatter plot. So, data dot plot uh, population comma sales style equal to O. So, Y label is ice cream sales title is sales when we they show this was. So, what is happening there seems to be some positive trend when the student population is more there is a more number of sales we will find a regression model for this. So, import stats model dot api as yes st underscore pop equal to that is a student population equal to data I am going to you know uh, in the population I am going to store, uh, store variable called st underscore population sales equal to data sales st underscore population s dot add underscore constant because I need to have the constant in the regression equation. So, model 1 equal to s m dot o l s sales comma sales is your dependent variable st underscore pop is independent variable result 1 equal to model 1 dot fit. So, print result 1 dot summary. So, what we are getting here when you look at this this is the constant value. So, the sales equal to how can write sales equal to 60 plus 5 this is our independent variable say a population s t underscore pop ok ok it is a population population. So, what is the meaning of interpretation of this 5? If the student population is increased by 1 unit the sales will increase by 5 units. Look at this r square r square is very good that is 90.3 I will explain meaning of adjusted r square in the coming class. Then we have to remember this is there is a standard error is 0 0.58 the t value is 8.68 this is the, prob the probability is 0 0.00 this is lower limit this is upper limit. There is a another way we can write it otherwise directly we can get y intercept and x coefficient from sklearn dot linear underscore model import linear regression x equal to data population dot values reshape minus 1 comma 1 y equal to data sales dot values reshape minus 1 comma 1 reg equal to linear regression reg dot fit is x comma y. So, linear regression is copy underscore x equal to true fit underscore intercept equal to true n underscore jobs equal to 1 normalize equal to false. What is the meaning of fit underscore intercept? Sometime if you put false, so sometime when you fit your regression line suppose it is coming like this. 
So, there, there is a y intercept is there, this much distance is y intercept. Sometime you need not have the y intercept for that time, for that time you have to use write false. The another one is normalize equal to false. So, there are y and there are x value. You, if you normalize x value and y value, then you run the regression, they will get a standardized regression coefficient. Now, we are not equal to false is written, so we are not going to normalize the data set. So, reg underscore uh, reg dot intercept underscore uh, 0 comma reg dot coefficient underscore 0 comma 0. So, this is your uh, intercept, this is your x coefficient. The previous also, you look at the previous slide, there also here got the 60 and 5, same result. So, what we can do in the ice cream and our example, the estimated regression equation is 50 plus 5x provides an estimate of the relationship between the size of the student population x and quarterly sales y. So, this is our regression equation. So, this is our regression equation. So, the y intercept, the slope is 5, the y intercept is 60. Then we will see what is the point estimate we can use the estimated regression equation to develop a point estimate of the mean value of y for a particular value of x or to predict an individual value of y corresponding to a given value of x. So, whatever value which you are predicting is the mean value. There is another we can predict, predict an individual value. Okay. For instance, suppose a manager want to wants a point estimate of the mean quarterly sales for all restaurants. Here you have to see all restaurants located near a college campus with the 10,000 students. So, if you say student population is 10, what will happen when you substitute to 10, it is 110. So, thus a point estimate for the mean quarterly sales of all restaurant located near campuses with the 10,000 students are 1 lakh 10,000 dollar. So, even regression equation also we can use the predict function, reg dot predict, when you put the input value that is x value, you can get y value is 110. So, what is the point estimate? Now, suppose the manager want to predict sales of an individual restaurant located near a college with the 10,000 students. In this case, we are not interested in the mean value of all restaurants located near campus of the 10,000 students. We are just interested predicting quarterly sales of one individual restaurant. As it turns out, the point estimate for an individual value of y is the same as the point estimate for the mean value of y. Hence, we would predict quarterly sales, sales 60 plus 5, the 10 is our input, it is 110,000 dollar. So, what I am saying, for a point estimate, the value of confidence interval and the value of prediction interval is same. You see that you may see the similarity also here. When we go for hypothesis testing, you see x bar plus or minus z sigma by root n, right. So, this x bar is nothing but our point estimate. So, whatever value after substituting 10, we are getting 110, we are getting that is only point estimate. So, point estimate is not a reliable one. So, we need to have interval estimate. So, interval estimate in the hypothesis testing context, x bar plus z sigma by root n is the upper limit x bar minus z sigma by root n is lower limit. The how we are going to find out upper limit lower limit in the regression context, I will explain in the next slide. First we will plot it. So, what will happen? Plot at mean value of x and y. So, x equal to data population, y equal to data sales. So, x is the population, y is the sales value. Plot dot figure, sns dot reg plot x comma y fit underscore regression is true plot dot scatter n p dot mean value of x comma n p dot mean value of y. So, we got this regression equation. You see that if you want to draw the best regression equ equation that has to pass through x bar comma y bar. So, that is why. So, this point is mean of x. So, this point is mean of y. So, what is a confidence interval estimation? Confidence interval is an interval estimate for the mean value of y for a given value of x. But the prediction interval is used whenever we want an interval estimate of an individual value of y. 
right this is the individual value of y that is the mean value of y for a given value of x for example why it is a mean value so what we are predicting is expected value of c a plus b x so whatever value after substituting x we are getting into the mean value so what will happen the margin of error is larger for a prediction interval so the prediction interval the margin of error will be larger for a confidence interval the margin of error will be smaller so confidence interval of estimation for example take xp equal to the particular or given value of independent variable x yp is the value of the dependent variable y corresponding to the given xp so expected value of yp is nothing but mean or expected value of dependent variable y corresponding to the given xp so y hat equal to b0 plus beta 1 xp is the point estimate of expected value of yp when x equal to xp so that is why 60 plus 5 into 10 is 110 so in general we cannot expect y hat p is equal to expected value of y p exactly. If you want to make an inference about how close y hat p is to the true mean value of expected value of y p, we will have to estimate the variance of y hat p. The formula for estimating the variance of y hat p at given x p is denoted by s square y hat p. So, this y hat p is nothing but s square 1 divided by n plus x p minus x bar whole square divided by sigma of x i minus x bar whole square. This is the variance of predicted y. So, the confidence interval is you see that the confidence interval is we are writing y hat p plus or minus. So, this s y hat p is the variance of this y hat p. right? So, what we have done is previously in the hypothesis testing example x plus r minus z sigma by root 10. So, instead of x bar we are writing y hat p plus r minus. So, instead of z we are writing t alpha by 2 this standard error instead of write we are writing s y hat p. So, that was the formula s equal to s square 1 to by n this can be derived very easily. So, I am not deriving you can refer any book for this. So, uh, the variance of y cap p equal to s square 1 by n plus x p minus x bar whole square divided by sigma of x minus x bar whole square. We can substitute this value here the s square is nothing but the standard error. So, we can substitute s square value n is 10 x p is 10 because that is a value of x. So, x bar is 14 whole square and when you substitute it, you are getting 110 plus or minus 11.415 okay so the green line shows green dotted line shows the upper limit the the down one shows the lower limit you see that it is the confidence interval is not a straight line it is somewhat curved one so what is happening when x bar equal to 4 the interval now is very narrow what will happen that is a special case now we will plot this confidence interval Okay. What is happening here? You see that when this point see it is not the straight line it is somewhat curved one. The confidence interval is very narrow when there is a x equal to x bar. We will see that is a special case. The estimated standard deviation of y hat p is smallest when x p equal to x bar. So, what will happen in the previous equation when you substitute x p equal to x bar? So, this term will become 0. So, remaining is s divided by 1 by n. You see that this is similar to our the result of central limit theorem. The variance of a sampling distribution is sigma by root n, it is similar to that. Okay. Now, we will go for prediction interval for an individual value of y instead of estimating the mean value of sales for all restaurants located near campus with the 10,000 students, we want to estimate sales on individual restaurant located near a particular college with the 10,000 students. So, when you go for predicting y value for an individual restaurant, 
there are two component of variance has to be added. One component is the variance of individual y values about the mean value of yp that is given by s square. The variance associated with using y hat p estimate is expected value of yp and estimate of which is given by s square of y hat p. So, what is happening here? If we want to go for a prediction interval, these two variances has to be added. One variance is for y, another variance is for y hat p, right? You see that? So, that is where s square individual is, see s square plus s square y hat p. So, when you add it, the s square is common, so we will get this formula. So, for this formula, we will substitute the value. When you substitute it, you see it is a 14.69. Now, the value of t alpha by 2, when you look at the, then when you substitute 14.69, you will get this was the, this 33.875 is the margin of error. So, 110 plus or minus 33.875 will get, so this one. So, in the black line shows the prediction interval, the green line shows the confidence interval. Both are not the straight line. So, when you look at this one, see the prediction line is having mar margin of error is more compared to the confidence interval. Now, confidence interval versus prediction interval. Confidence intervals and prediction intervals show the precision of the regression result. Narrower intervals provide a higher degrees of precision. So, what after doing regression analysis, when you plot the a confidence and prediction interval, it has to be narrow. If it is wide means that model is not the good model. Now, we will use python to plot this prediction interval and confidence interval. So, for that purpose from stats model dot stats dot outlier underscore influence import summary table st comma data 1 comma ss2 equal to summary underscore table result 1 comma alpha equal to 5 percentage fitted values equal to data colon comma second that means we are referring the third column predict underscore mean underscore se equal to date uh, data 1 colon comma 3 that is we are referring fourth column predict underscore mean ci interval that is mean ci interval means your uh, confidence interval lower limit confidence interval upper limit so that was because in the summary table that is in the summary table, we are referring the fourth to sixth column dot t predict underscore c i confidence interval low predict, uh, predict underscore c i upper limit data to 6 to 8. Actually, what we are have is what is happening here? We are getting in the summary table all the result. So, we are calling 4 to 6, 6 to 8, 3 to, to get a particular value that is the reason here. You see that this is the predict underscore mean underscore c i low. So, we are getting the confidence interval for the lower limit. Here predict mean underscore c i for upper limit. Okay. So, this was predict for this was prediction interval, this is for the confidence interval, the first two things for the confidence interval, the next bottom two is for the prediction interval. So, lower limit, upper limit this is the lower limit c i uh, c i underscore low c i underscore upper is the upper limit okay so this picture shows you see that um, x equal to s dot add underscore constant x fig comma a x equal to plot dot subplot fig size equal to 8 comma 6 a x dot plot x comma y o label equal to data a x dot plot x comma fitted values r iphon comma label y less a x plot dot x comma predict underscore c i low it is in the dotted line b a x dot plot x comma predict underscore c i underscore upper limit b hyphen hyphen a x dot plot x comma predict underscore mean c i low g a x dot plot x predict underscore mean c i upper limit so, the location is the best pl dot show. So, when you run this command, you will get this kind of a model. So, the green one shows the confidence level, 
the blue one shows the prediction interval. In this picture, when you look at the uh, R underscore uh, represents the red color, B represents blue color, G represents green color. The iPhone represents what kind of pattern we need to have in the in the picture. Now, what we have done in this class, we have explained what is point interval and what is confidence interval and what is prediction interval. So, the point interval is same for particular value of x for, for both confidence and prediction interval. So, the another point which we have learnt in this lecture is that the confidence interval is not the straight line, it is curved line similarly the prediction interval. The another one is the prediction interval is having more margin of error when compared to confidence interval. After that what you have done with the help of python I have run this code to show you how to plot this confidence and prediction interval. Thank you very much.